Lord, we thank you and praise you today for the message that you placed upon my heart. And I ask, Lord, that you would guide and direct my words, Lord, as I speak them, and, and that you would bring understanding to us, Lord. We ask this, Jesus, in your wonderful name. Amen. A little bit different message this morning, a little more of a probably teaching informational on a subject that's been in the news. Um, last week, I don't know, you would have had to completely ignore the news to avoid the news on the fact that they were claiming that our government has um, obtained alien artifacts and they're talking about the, the reality of aliens from other worlds and a congressional hearing on it. And I've been saying for years that this was coming we call this disclosure. And for a while we've been seeing soft disclosure happening um, all over. We see it in movies. Hollywood for years has been pre preparing us for this idea that there are people from other planets and that they're going to come to the Earth. Some of them portrayed as good, some portrayed as bad. Um, but they've been preparing a whole generations of the idea that there's life out and it's eventually going to come to the earth. Well, we want to deal with that. My message today is the unseen kingdom, angel, angels or aliens. What are we dealing with? And this is going to be a bit of a little foil hat message. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I had my own hat up. Oh. If you wonder what that's all, how many saw the movie Signs? Yeah. And the same where they're all sitting in the closet with their supposed to protect their minds. Well, I have mine prepared just in case. Um, from the aliens. Actually, Signs is one of my favorite movies. It's it's not really about aliens. There's a story about it, but the true story is about a minister who loses his faith and regains it. That's the true story behind the story. It's an excellent well done the way they wove in the alien idea, but yet the two heart of the story um, was there. But we wanted to deal with this subject because it's, it raises a lot of questions in people's minds. Well, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say anything about this? But if, if aliens are coming and they say they put us here, then well, does that mean the Bible is just a storybook? So we're going to take a look at that today. Luke 21, 25 to 26, it says, And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and stars, and upon the earth dismay among nations, and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear at the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Since you know it says about things coming upon the world, that, that word in the Greek could mean arrive arriving upon the world. We, we're we beginning a warning in the end times that something is going to be arriving here that's going to shake the heavens, shake mankind. I.D. Thomas, in his book, um, I don't know how, he, he's a professor, I'll get the title of his book, but he's a professor at uh, California Pacific School of Theology, wrote an excellent book called the Omega Conspiracy. And it's, wish I could say it's easy to get, I think everybody should read it, but it's now, it's no longer being published. The last publishing was 2007, it wasn't that long ago, but the, the, the paperbacks are already selling for 80 to $100 on, online. And I'm going, I have a copy and I don't know where it is. I've got to find it because I'm not going to pay that much money for another copy. I have an electronic copy. But anyway, he wrote, The burgeoning of demonic activity in our time is proof of our proximity to the last days yeah. and to the mightiest power encounter of all history. The sons of God are on a collision course with the saints of God, and we may be witnessing the opening scenarios. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. He, if you remember, I've spoken on the sons of God. That goes from Genesis chapter 6, where it talks about the sons of God who are angels who came down to earth and took upon themselves uh, human wives and 
had an offspring called the Nephilim, which is a hybrid race on the earth. And he believes in his book that, that, that they will return in the end days. And that's with all this UFO stuff we're hearing about seeing maybe part of that. And I'm going to be quoting a lot from his book. I think he's did one of the best works on it. Um, there's another really good book, Alien Encounters by Chuck Misler and a gentleman last name Eastman. It's a little more, it's a thicker book, a lot longer to read because it has a lot of examples and stories and things in it about alien encounters and abductions, a lot more than in um, uh, the Omega Conspiracy. The Omega Conspiracy, Omega is the end, remember Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the conspiracy of the end times. So we'll take a look at that. But what are they? If we look at fallen angels, I believe, right off the bat, I believe these aliens that we're hearing about are fallen angels, the majority of them, and some are demons. I believe there is a, a difference between a fallen angel and a demon, and we'll be talking about that a little bit. The whole idea or concept of Satan is based on a misunderstood visit by extraterrestrials in the remote past. According to the ancient Aslan theory, the reason why we have the idea of a Satan today is because there might have been some type of a mutiny between good and bad extraterrestrial factions in the remote past. And so the mutineers were cast out by the commander and they became known as the evil fallen angels, which they never were. That's a clip from the show Ancient Aliens, and I hope you see where he gets that messed up. He's saying Satan and fallen angels, oh, they're just misunderstood aliens. No, they're not. They're exactly what we believe them to be and what the scripture says. But that's what this whole alien thing they've been pushing for you. And there, I'm going to have a few clips from this show, and the reason is, is that is one of the most popular shows on the History Channel. I don't know if you've known that. It's the longest running show they've ever had. It's still, they're still producing new episodes. They just keep regurgitating the same stuff and wrapping it in different packages with the same thing they've been saying for the last, boy, it's been, that was a long time, at least 15 years. Yeah, I been around a long time, that show. First one, we're looking at one of these fallen angels, Lucifer. Lucifer, Satan, was a fallen angel. He was an angelic being that was a covering over the throne of God. And because of his pride, he fell and was cast out of heaven. Ezekiel has a passage that refers to this being. In Ezekiel 28, it says, Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You have the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You are in Eden, the garden of God. So even though it says it's taken up a, a lamentation against the king of Tyre, it's not, it then begins to associate him with Satan because he was never in Eden, the garden of God. Who was in Eden, the garden of God? Satan. The serpent. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, the turquoise, and the emerald, and the gold. The workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. So it was very well adorned, very beautiful, angelic being. You are the anointed cherub who covers, and I placed you there. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. So again, we know this is not talking about the earthly king of Tyre. This is talking about the power behind his evilness, which was Satan. It says he was on the holy mountain of God. He walked in the midst of the stones of fire. Now that term stones of fire, something, well, that means he walked in the midst of the angels. Stones of fire referred to angels that other believe. And there's some historic context that says that stones of fire was a reference to the planets. Many 
uh, back before they really understood the heavens and they, they saw what they called the planet stones of fire because they were bright and, and they moved through the sky different than the other stars. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. By the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore, I have cast you as, a pro as profane from the mountain of God and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Interesting, a uh, couple passages in scripture that may have a reference to this is that some believe are referring to a planet called Rahab, they think was uh, a place where Satan had his dwelling place amongst the stones of fire. If you know in our solar system, there's a missing planet. It's called the asteroid belt. It's where a planet should be. And there's been different theories about what that is. How did the asteroid belt get there? Um, is it just a planet that never formed, or is it a planet that somehow was destroyed? Well, there's some interest, a couple interesting verses in the Bible that, that scholars go, they don't really have a great understanding of what's being referred to, and it's very possible that it's referred to a planet that was destroyed. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When the waves rise, you still them. You have broken Rahab in pieces as one who is slain. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours, the earth is yours. The world in all its fullness, you have founded them. So this is a reference to a Rahab being broken in pieces. Some scholars say this is a reference to Egypt. But Rahab is not an Egyptian name. It, it would be odd that it would refer to Egypt, or why not just say you have broken Egypt in pieces? Because everywhere else in Scripture, Egypt is called Egypt. So there's this Rahab that was broken in pieces. And Isaiah 51, 9 says, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake in the ancient days and the generations of old. Are you not the arm that cut Rahab apart and wounded the serpent? So somehow this cutting and breaking of Rahab wounded the serpent, wounded Satan. Now it's interesting, last night I was watching a, a program on, they are talking about Mars and all the interest in the planet Mars. Now people have always been interested in the planet Mars. And if you've heard anything, there are people that speculate there are artifacts on Mars that points to life at one time. Well, if Satan walked among the planets, it's quite possible that we are going to find artifacts of some type of structures or things among the planets. That would not surprise me. That would not prove if they found, I don't know, if they saw like the face on Mars, these different things that they found. If those were proven to actually be ancient dwell, uh, buildings or ancient structures, this tells me that Satan dwelled among them the planets. They belonged to him then. They were not aliens that lived there that eventually put life on Earth. That's the story they're trying to tell. And what's interesting about Mars is they don't know why it's it's as barren as it is. At one time it had water, it had other things, there's proof of that. It's all gone. Well, there is a scar on Mars that is big old gash across the surface of Mars, goes like a third of the way across the Something happened very dramatic. Was it a collision with another planet? Something we don't know for sure. There's also an interesting, if you look at the moons of Saturn, one of the moons of Saturn that has a slow rotation is dark on one side. Like It looks like it was splattered with something from some kind of destruction or blast somewhere in our solar system. There's evidence that something blew apart. And this may be a reference to that. But it's not a reference. If we find those artifacts on other planets or the moon, like they claim that they've seen, they, that the Bible tells us that Satan walked among the fiery stones. So those would be artifacts left behind by Satan, not by aliens from a different world. Talk about the Watchers. Watchers were the angels that came down in the book of. Um, Genesis in chapter 6. In Daniel, the book of Daniel refers to a group of angels called the Watchers. There's the book of Enoch that goes into details about the Watchers. Again, the book of Enoch is not a 
biblical book, but it was a book that was very widely accepted. It was the bestseller around the time of Christ. And it wasn't a fictional book. It wasn't a, they didn't write fictional books. They wrote down what they believed the history was. Because parchment was too expensive to, to do a lot of writing just for, the, for fun. There weren't science fiction books. So the book of Enoch describes the watchers, the angels that came down in more detail in the book of Genesis. And it's quoted in the book of Jude and referred to in the book of Peter. And there are also references to things from the book of Enoch in the Gospels. For one is, is the um, reference to Jesus as the Son of Man. Throughout the book of Enoch, the Messiah is referred to as the Son of Man. So I refer to it one place in the Bible you find the Son of Man is in the book of Daniel, which was also what they call the Second Temple Period book, and that's around the time the book of Enoch was written as well. So the watchers in Jude it says, and angels who did not keep their own domain but abandoned their proper abode. So this is speaking of what happened in Genesis 6 in the book of Jude. It says these were the angels. These were not all the other explanations they tried to come up with for the sons of God. They were angels who did what? They didn't keep their domain and abandoned their proper abode. They abandoned heaven. They abandoned the dimension where they dwelled. They were to watch over the earth, watch over mankind, but they decided they wanted to take women and have offspring. It says he has kept in eternal bounds under darkness for the judgment of the great day, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same way as these indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh. Their sin was similar to that of Sodom and Gomorrah that they went after strange flesh, they went after human women and something they weren't supposed to do. And these angels that did that during the time of Noah uh, were chained in eternal darkness. An exhibited example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. And then Peter says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, and the word there in the Greek is Tartarus, it's the only place where the word Tartarus is used for hell. Tartarus in the Greek was the deepest abode of hell, the deepest pit and committed them to pits of darkness. Reserved for judgment, did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others when he brought a flood upon the earth of the ungodly. So if you want to know who were these angels that were cast into Tartarus for committing this sin, it goes on to tell us about Noah, a preacher of righteousness. It ties it in with the days of Noah if you read the context of what's being said there in Peter. So those are some proof texts that these were fallen angels. And the world has, every culture in the world has stories and legends about gods that came from the heavens. And most of their stories talk about them having offspring with human women. It's in the Indian writings in East India. It's in... Um, the, the uh, Roman mythology, we call it mythology, it wasn't mythology to them, all the Roman gods, they believed that stuff. That was, they didn't write that as a myth, that was written down as what they believed who their gods were. It's in the Greek pantheon of gods as well. You have the Titans that were half God, half human. All that stuff points back to what happened in the Bible. The book of Genesis says they were the mighty men on the earth. Tartarus, again, is the deepest of bits in um, hell, a dungeon of torment, suffering for the wicked as the prison for the titans. See, in, in the Greek, it refers to a prison for the titans. These were these, we know as angels that came down and did what they weren't supposed to do. They weren't what the Greeks said they were. But Paul chose that word for a reason. So who were the visitors from the sky that came down to earth? Every ancient civilization has stories of gods that came from the sky. It's, it's in every culture. It's in the Native American cultures. It's in the Japanese culture. It's in the Chinese culture. Every culture on earth has these stories. Why? Because this happened in the past. Now if you watch the show Ancient Aliens, they say that all is misunderstood aliens. 
They said they were gods. They said they were angels. But we know there are no such thing as those. They were all aliens from another world. I mean, you're like, you watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> I call it the Everything Alien Show. <laughs> you know, that's why sometimes I watch it, I want to throw something at the TV. I'm like, no, the Bible says that. <laughs> Wake up. Every once in a while, they get really close to the truth. And if they would just replace that word alien yeah. with angel, fallen angel, it, it'd be a whole different show. Mm -hmm. So from the Omega conspiracy to our generation more than any other, the heavens have revealed yet another strange, frightening, fascinating phenomenon. In unmistakable terms, they tell us that we are not alone in the universe. Other beings exist out there, and they are coming here. No longer is this something to fuel our imagination or to delay our curiosity. Rather, it is something to engage our most serious and rational attention. We need to pay attention to it because this is part of the end time prophecy that this would happen in the end days. <laughs> Ancient myths are full of stories of gods descending to earth to mate with humans. According to many sources, including uh, Norse mythology, Greek mythology, and even the Bible, uh, we have stories of the sons of God or actual gods from Mount Olympus or Valhalla, and they're coming to earth. They find uh, the daughters of men attractive. When all these encounters happened, and when women slept with those gods, which can be found in multiple texts all around the planet, that those women actually had sex with extraterrestrials, not with gods, because gods do not exist. See, with how they twist that, that's what they want you to believe. The gods don't exist, it's just aliens from and that's the great deception that I believe is going to come upon the earth. In the end times, there's going to be great deception. We're going to see that in scripture. But I believe that that's what we're being set up for. This idea that, no, there is no God. We were put here by aliens from another world. I believe that we are headed for a day when they will have aliens land either on in Washington, D.C. or somewhere, and they're going to get out and say, we, brought, we put you here. Our ancestors seeded the earth, and you are our space brothers, and all that stuff. What's interesting about this whole alien thing is that people that supposedly communicate with aliens, a lot of times it's through what we call channeling. That's demonic. But the aliens seem to be more concerned about what we believe in the, in the sense of getting the, the the Bible wrong and that we're misunderstanding who what the Bible's talking about. You can tell me they're communicating communicating from, you know, vast light years from us and higher technology, but they're more concerned about what we believe mm -hmm. uh, religiously? Mm -hmm. No. That seems to be their their big concern to straighten us out in that area. No, you think they would want to come and bring us technology, heal our sickness, do something, but they're concerned about what we believe in. So demons, what's the difference between a fallen angel and a demon? Not a lot, but demons are the disembodied spirits of the half-breed, half-angel, half-human, Nephilim, uh, according to the ancient Jewish writings. That's what they believe, that demons were these disembodied spirits who were left to wander the earth. You never read anywhere, and you won't find it, you'll read about demons possessing people, we see that in the New Testament, but doesn't it say anywhere that a fallen angel possesses people? Demons seem to want a body. They want a place to inhabit. And when they're cast out of one, they go and find another. Like they're missing their body, and they want a body. They're left to wander the earth. And in the, in the book of Enoch, it's one of the historic Jewish books that puts, and there's others, the book of Jubilees, and some other that mention that these disembodied spirits are the evil spirits on the earth because they have no where to go. There is no redemption for these spirits. They cannot get saved. They were never meant to exist. And the Book of Enoch says, but now the giants 
who are born from the union of the spirits and the flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, because their dwelling shall be upon the earth and inside the earth. Evil spirits have come out of their bodies, because from the day that they were created from the sons of God, they became watchers. Their first origin is the spiritual foundation. They will become evil upon the earth and shall be called evil spirits. The dwelling of the spiritual beings of heaven is heaven, but the dwelling of the spirits of the earth, which are born upon the earth, is in the earth. So these spirits that were born upon the earth, not in heaven, that didn't, they have no redemption. They are left to wander the earth and torment us. Those that, especially those that don't believe in Christ. So do they come from another part of our galaxy or another galaxy? No, they come from, they're interdimensional. They're right here and they've been here for a long time. Who are the humanoids? Whence do they come? Whither do they go? What are they doing here? What is their home? Could they be the procreators of a latter day Nephilim from um, the Omega conspiracy? So I want to look at just these different types of aliens that you hear about and, and I'll kind of give you a little explanation of what I believe people are actually seeing and experiencing. There's the grays. I mean, this is the typical, the gray alien. Now this one down in the corner is actually not a drawing or depicting a gray alien. That was a drawing made by Al Aleister Crowley who called himself the beast. He was a Satanist. And he communicated with this being. And so he drew a picture of this being that communicated with him. And then interesting, this demon he communicated with, his picture looks a lot like what we call a gray alien. I believe the gray aliens are uh, they're avatars for these demonic spirits. And what's interesting is I had a, a and I'm sorry, I have Stuff that I've studied through the years and looked at that I, eh, I'm not sure about that. Now I'm going, I might be, you know, go back and rethink that because the stuff that's being revealed in Congress is that they did actually get alien beings and have them. Because I saw it was supposedly an interview with an alien being being held in, in Area 51. I don't know, you know. Put your hat on and watch that one. But what I found interesting is what this alien was telling him. The alien told me they didn't fear death because when their body dies, they just move into another one. They basically are saying these bodies, these gray alien bodies, are basically an avatar for them to possess, to live in. And when that body dies, they get another one. Where are these bodies being made? I don't know. Somehow... The fallen angels, I think, are making these biological, basically, suit for demons so that they can do some of the work for them. Why are they, why do you hear about all these animal mutilations? They're taking tissue from animals, and it's very specific tissue that is taken. Why? I think it's to, to make these biological suits, to give them a place to possess. You go, well, that's crazy. I thought they just possessed people. Well, no, Jesus could cast them into pigs. They can, they can possess any type of biological thing. Even instances of a temporarily possessing non-biological objects. So I think gray aliens are what we would classically call demons. That's what the gray aliens are. They're like the worker bees for the fallen angels. Which brings us to another class of alien that people see, they call them the Nordics. Blue-eyed, blonde-haired, very tall. And you see this Hollywood depiction of Nordics, aliens. I believe these are the fallen angels, along with the reptilians. Also, I believe, are fallen angels. Because we know in the Garden of Eden, what did they see? A reptile that spoke to them. And this is a, a Samaritan relief of um, one of their gods, which is a uh, reptilian. And then you see Hollywood's depiction of a reptilian. Um, so those are different types of aliens that you might hear about. They're all 
they can classify them in your mind. I believe the Greys are demons, and the reptilians and the Nordics that people claim to see are fallen angels. <coughs> so where do they come from? By supposing they mix, by supposing they come from a planet within our own galaxy, the Milky Way, it would still take them anywhere from four to thirty-eight light years to get here. One thing is crystal clear that you can't make that journey by physics or by any known principle of aerodynamics. The thing is, is to travel at the speed of light, this is how long they could get here if they could travel at the speed of light. For one, the amount of energy that would be required for a ship, even a small ship to travel, 99% of the speed of light would be just, it, it violates the laws of physics. The other thing, and I didn't know this, that in physics, if you actually achieve the speed of light, you cease to exist. Nothing exists at or beyond the speed of light. So they've come up with all these theories about warps in space and, and wormholes and things. That may all be possible, but I believe those are, those are ways of traveling from other dimensions. Remember, we have the spiritual dimension and we have the physical dimension. I think things that they're describing are, are ways they travel from the spiritual dimension into the physical dimension. Two of the most respected and qualified researchers on the subject, Valley and Heineck, have completely discarded the theory that they come from another galaxy. If UFOs are indeed somebody else's nuts and bolts hardware, then we must still explain how such tangible hardware can change shape before our eyes, vanish in a Cheshire cat manner, not even leaving a grin, seemingly melt away in front of us, or apparently materialize mysteriously before us without apparent detection by persons nearby or in neighboring towns. We must wonder too where UFOs are hiding when not manifesting themselves to human eyes. So where do they go? How can people describe them? They see them from and they just vanish right before their eyes. How do they do that? Even the, the military videos that they were showing at this hearing, that people might have seen a TikTok video, it was very on the news quite a bit. It, it, it was an object shaped about the size of a 40 foot long um, propane tank, <laughs> traveling at extremely high speed and suddenly making right angle turns and shooting up into out of sight instantly, which no human being or biological entity could survive that kind of g-forces. So it was, it, was, it was violating physics. How? They have to be other dimensional. And that's what the conclusion they're coming to. And Valley and Heineck. Heineck was uh, the one that was behind Project Blue Book. Scientists that they hired when they did Project Blue Book back in the 50s, looking into UFOs and determining whether they were, could be explained or not. Valet was a French UFO um, researcher. He was depicted in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. There was a Frenchman that was along with him in, in some of the scenes. That was supposedly Valet. And he came to some other conclusions that are going to be interesting and help prove our point here. I'll talk about it in a minute. But anyway, UFOs, UAPs, and aliens are interdimensional. They are not interplanetary. They are not coming from another world somewhere out in our galaxy or another galaxy. See, we didn't even talk about it. They're traveling from another galaxy. That's just within our galaxy. If they're coming from another galaxy. You're talking about millions of light years. That means it takes millions of years to get here at the speed of light. So it doesn't work. Other researchers, Albrecht and Alexander, state the case with clarity. The extraterrestrial theory draws conclusions of a profoundly spiritual nature while conveniently avoiding the controversial labor, label. That's what most of them are coming to. This has more of a spiritual nature to it than a physical nature. Entities that operate with total disregard for the inviolate laws of physics, traveling at the speed of light or faster, and having solved all their problems would have to be classified as spiritual, semantic arguments notwithstanding. So even the researchers, UFO research, serious ones, are coming to that conclusion. These are spiritual in nature. Does the Bible speak of extraterrestrials visiting visitors to the planet Earth? So I go, well, what does the Bible say about it? These things have been coming to the Earth 
What is, it must be in the Bible. Well, in ancient aliens, they like to quote the Bible and misquote these things and say that they're not aliens or men, angels or aliens. One is Genesis 6 that I referred to. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards when the sons of God came to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Those were angels, not like ancient alien says, oh, these were just misunderstood aliens. No, they were angels. Ezekiel describes, and I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it and radiating out of its midst like the color of amber, and of the midst of fire also from within it came the likeness of the four living creatures. This was a vision of God appearing to Ezekiel. This is not a description of a flying saucer or UFO of some sort, according again to the ancient alien theorists. They like to point to this one as well. Second Kings. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. He saw the angelic beings all around him. But what do all these things also describe? They describe technology. They use some type of technology. And according to some of the ancient writings like the book of Enoch says that these angels that came down in the days of Noah brought technology to mankind that mankind was not supposed to have. And it listed, lists what angels brought, what knowledge and, and the punishment they received for doing that. Well, what are we hearing uh, from these hearings they just had? They say they're back engineering technology from stuff that they got from fall, crashed spaceships. Well, I'm going, okay, what you're telling me is these beings were so intelligent that they could overcome the laws of physics to get here from another world, travel all the way to Earth, and crash. That, yeah. And so we collected all the, the rubbish. No, I believe that is a fallen angel way of doing what they did back in the days of Noah. But other than directly giving man, you know, teaching mankind, they're just throwing some scraps down and saying, here, reverse engineer this. Guess what you'll come up with? That's where we got, if you, if you follow technology, we were pretty, you know, basic in our technology up until the 50s, around the time of this Roswell crash, which they seem to acknowledge that this, you know, they did recover stuff in this hearing. <clears throat> so what did we suddenly get after that? All of a sudden, our radios went from being, you know, big radio on the counter with tubes in it, to a little transistor radio just within years that we could, I remember having one as a little kid. And one, too long before that, that was just unheard of. We got the transistor. Then that eventually became computing power, I think, and then what we have now. You're running around with alien technology. Fallen angel technology that was given to us, and why? Yeah, there's good things we do with this technology has some good purposes. But you know what? This is one of the most destructive forces right. among our young people right now. Sure there is so much garbage in their hands that they can have access to that you don't even realize what they can get. Yeah. Sure. You know, I'm watching these things on, on the, this child sex trafficking and pornography. The, one of the biggest industries on technology on the internet is pornography huge industry. They're so big, they're now lobbying Congress for different protections and things for pornography. And they're listening to them. Why? Because they're, it's a billion, billion, you know, multi-billion dollar industry. And uh, anybody knows how, can probably find it on here. Unless you're blocking it. That's the problem. There's junk on there. Plus, you're getting all this information that is just phony. Mm -hmm. You know, that all, this, and all this social media stuff and things that got our kids and our young people so tied up that their lives depend on this stuff. Mm -hmm. And some of their lives are ending because of it. Because they're being attacked by other people on social media. And all of a sudden, they, have, don't, they don't have a good standing on social media. Media, everybody hates them, so might as well kill myself. 
It's ridiculous. Yeah, Where'd that technology come from? And they're pushing the chip too, yeah. Now they're trying to push chips. They want to put it to everybody to trace us. And um, it's crazy, but if you trace it back, it's, it's fallen. Angel technology we weren't meant to have. They're still doing what they did. And nothing, the, the Bible says, Ecclesiastes, that there's nothing new under the sun. Whatever happened, and all that is happening today. They, the, the angels did it in Genesis 6. During that time, gave mankind technology, caused the earth to be so filled with violence and hatred and garbage that God decided, I need to destroy the whole place. What is he going to do with what we're doing with their technology now? We're coming towards what uh, I.D. Thomas says, a collision course. We're on a collision course where we're headed towards the book of Revelation. The Bible tells us what the culmination of all this is going to be. Will the Nephilim return? Will we see hybrids return? The Bible seems to indicate that. In the book of Daniel it says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, this is a statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream, and he's talking about the feet of it, the statue were made of iron mixed with miry clay. It was a mixture of iron and clay. It says, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Think about that statement right there. Who are they going to mingle themselves with the seed of men? They must not be men. Right? Tell me these fallen angels are going to try to again, or their offspring are going to try to again mingle themselves with the seed of men. It says, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. It's not going to be a good mixture. But they're going to try it again. There are many who believe that the, the Antichrist will be a Nephilim. And, and if he truly is what the Bible says, the offspring of Satan, then he will be a Nephilim. Um, and you might wonder, why hasn't Satan done this before? Look what the punishment was the first time. The angels, and, and if, if the book of Enoch is correct in its count, 200 angels that came down and did this thing are all locked in the deepest pit of hell for what they did. Satan is not locked in the deep, deepest pit of hell, so he obviously didn't partake in that, and he's saving that until the very end. Humanoid cannot be explained in terms of other planets and galaxies either. This leaves us with only two options. They are angelic beings and thus benign or demonic entities and thus malign. But which one of the two? I'm here to tell you they're demonic entities. They are fallen angels. That's what all this alien thing is. If they are from another planet, why do they bolt at the name of Jesus? This is something that Valet originally noticed, the researcher. He said, he, in talking to people who had been abducted by aliens, talking to some, he found it interesting that some would say, well, I was, they were trying to take me and I cried out the name of Jesus and they vanished. So, well, why would aliens vanish at the name of Jesus? Well, you saying, Bill, and during his experience in fear, he calls out, Jesus, 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 please help me. By calling out, he abruptly stops his abduction experience. These enemies can be stopped in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. He had a very difficult time realizing that this was something that I could not protect my family against in, in a physical way, in this type. The realization that it was beyond my physical, you can't bar the doors and lock the doors. They're going to get in. The only thing that saved me was my relationship with God and believing in him and asking for him to help. And he came. And ever since then, whenever we experience this, um, we've had shadow people or creatures come into the house. And the first thing you do is pray to God. And you live it. And we, we believe it every single day. It is with us with myself and with my children. And they know, don't be afraid. When we see this, if you pray to God, they will leave. And they leave. They try, but they don't get in because 
We believe in God. Uh, there are aliens. In fact, you know, all the angels are aliens. They're from another uh, planet, another dimension. Uh, all the demons also that have fallen are aliens. But they manifest themselves these days through what many people consider uh, UFOs, unidentified flying objects. I knew exactly what it was, and I knew exactly what I was seeing. And uh, basically what I did was to rebuke it, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And straight away, the activity stopped. Wow. Wow. And so you got it there, first-hand testimony from an expert. This is someone trained. And uh, Keith, you're not a new pilot, are you? No, for the last 32 years. You've been a pilot 32 years. Not, not like a rinky-dink airline. I'm a senior airline. A senior airline and a major airline. Yeah, major. That you probably, uh, you know, those listening probably have flown on. This is a senior pilot with two other uh, co-pilot, one a training pilot. All three of them saw erratic movement from a UFO. And here's the catcher. The moment he used the name of Jesus, the thing disappeared. So we're never afraid, and that gives another witness that UFOs are not um, interplanetary objects. They're actually interdimensional. They're spiritual objects coming to deceive people. And a lot of people end up believing that, oh, I don't believe the Bible anymore. I don't believe God. Aliens made me. But that's a fairy tale. And the Bible's talked about incursions from the Nephilim in Genesis chapter 6 with the, son, the fallen sons of God. Um, you know, invaded the earth and made such a mess. That's why there was Noah's flood. It was the cause of Noah's flood. So I'm very happy to, to share this and then have confirmation from you as a senior pilot. I'm really thankful for that. That's arranged by God. And I'm, I really believe that's going to help someone that's been trapped or been uh, in this delusion, believing that aliens made them and aliens are going to save them. No, there is one God and he sent his son Jesus to save us. And only through him you can be free from these demonic influences. Tell you one more thing that I've heard directly from someone else who's done UFO research. He found out a commonality between uh, people who were abducted by aliens, and in every case, they never take a born again Christian. They can't do it. They have no power to take a born again Christian. Think about it. So if these are aliens from another world, why would they react to the name of Jesus? I'll tell you right now for protection, you don't really need a foil hat. I would much rather have the name of Jesus than, than trust this to protect me. <laughs> Why the deception? Ronald Reagan said, in our obsession with antagonism of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside the world. A lot of people will believe the way you bring everybody together <laughs> under one common leadership is aliens showing up. Well, a few years after that, um, Dr. Henry Kissinger at the Bilderberg Conference says, Today, America would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there were an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated, that threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every human fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by the world government. It's their goal is to get us under a world government. How do you get the whole world under a world government? You have some, whether faked or seemingly real, vis visitation or, or um, threat from an alien world, and they think they'll bring everybody together. And then they'll welcome you. Give up your rights willingly. No, we need to understand what it is. It's deception. It's a lie. It's not what they're telling us. I don't care if giant motherships begin to appear over our cities. There's a thing called Project Bluebeam that the military has been working on the ability to project images in the air. There are some people that believe one of the reasons they're filling our atmosphere with particles of aluminum is part of Project Bluebeam to give them something to project against, basically turning the atmosphere into a giant screen. 
this type of thing. I don't know. I've read about it. I've studied it. Whether they have that ability now or using it, I don't know. But they're, we don't know everything that, that our government is doing. Uh, generally, once we find out about something, it's already been around for 20 or 30 years. Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-11 says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all powers, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. I will tell you that a strong delusion could come, one that could deceive even the elect. I believe that that type of delusion very possibly could be this whole idea of alien race showing up on Earth and saying, we're the ones that put you there. We seeded your planet. You're our offspring. There is no God. You guys need to just get rid of that old ancient book that's just you know a bunch of people mistaking who we were that's a deception i'm here to tell you don't believe it don't fall for it they're beginning to disclose it that's the only reason i'm taking the time today to talk about this subject is because it's being disclosed saying the government is now saying oh we know it's real they've been preparing us for a long time the reason for that was is back in I don't remember what year, it was in the 50s, I believe, when they broadcast War of the Worlds on the radio. And it, people thought it was a real news broadcast instead of a radio show. And across the country, there were people who were panicking. There were people who were jumping out of buildings. They thought the Martians were coming and were going to destroy them. And it was just a radio play by Orson Welles. And based on the, the book War of the Worlds. And so they thought, well, that's what's going to happen if we ever tell the people that there are aliens here, they're not going to panic. They won't be able to handle this because they're so brainwashed into believing this. How are we going to, you know, how are they going to receive it? So they've waited, but they've slowly been conditioning us with movies and television and all this stuff to get this is to believe in these alien beings as part of a way now they see this is a great deception this is a way we can control mankind they're looking for ability to control us if you don't believe that then where were you the last few years they found through a cold virus that they could control the whole world basically what it was of the form of, of the severe cold virus. And they had, and even today, I go places, I still see people driving down the street wearing masks. I go to the store, there's still people wearing masks. They've proven over and over, they do, don't do anything, but there are people that are gonna wear them the rest of their lives because of the deception that was brought on us and the conditioning. We gotta be careful what we believe. Believe God's word. And if you ever have any kind of experience like that, cry out the name of Jesus. And it ends. <clears throat> I know that for myself. I've had bad nightmares at night where I felt like something was trying to get it. And I, even in my sleep, call out the name of Jesus and I wake up and it's gone. You can just think it if you can't get the words. I don't have a dream. Everybody have a dream if you can't get the words out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just thinking it's gone. I've had that experience, and that dream ends. Demonic, when the enemy tries to attack us, he does not want to hear the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He will flee. So remember that. You have nothing to fear. That's right. Nothing to fear. But you have the knowledge to help other people who might be deceived by this stuff to tell them what it is. <clears throat> it's not what they're saying it is. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word, Lord. And I thank you for the discernment that you give us. Lord, we pray that you would help us in these times when we are confronted by others who are being deceived to help them to understand the truth. Lord, that the enemy won't be able to get hold of them. 
and turn them against your people. And Lord, I ask your protection over us, over our minds, over our bodies, over our spirits. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us, Lord. In your wonderful name I pray. Amen. And if any of you would like to take a moment of hat, see me at a lake you want to Only $50. Only $50. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>